My name is Michelle Howe, and I am honored and humbled to have been asked to be here today to share with you my Kentucky food story. Um, my husband Nathan and I and our four children, Carter, Elizabeth, Lila, and Adeline, live on 20 acres in Halfway, Kentucky, and we are full-time farmers. And we grow fruits, vegetables, protein, and other farm items for 25 families through a community-supported agriculture program oftentimes called a CSA. Um, community supported agriculture or CSAs are changing the food system along with lots of other things that are happening here in our community, across the state, and across the country. They are a commitment between consumers and farmers. The farmer makes the commitment to work hard and grow food for each customer that they have and the customers make a commitment to help pay the bills. This is the home that we live, on, um, live in, and it was built in 1829 by the Dotson family. And this is a picture of the home and, and that family. And I can't help but think of what life was like back then, what food they ate, and even what they ate for breakfast, lunch, or dinner. This is a photo of my great-great-aunt, Effie Annie Earls. And Effie grew up in Monroe County, Kentucky, where she and her family grew most of their own food and they depended on their neighbors for the rest. And they might have went to market occasionally to buy flour, salt, sugar, or coffee. But a lot has changed on Kentucky farms and in the way that we eat in the last 200 years. My husband Nathan grew up in Hart County, Kentucky, where he and his family grew commodity crops, corn, wheat, and tobacco and they depended on their neighbors to get the job done and to collaboratively take their product to market every year. Tobacco paid Nathan's way off the farm and into college so that he could pursue a career. And when Kentuckians or Kentucky farmers started to lose their tobacco crops, we as Kentuckians lost a generation of farmers. Nathan and I met while we were attending Western Kentucky University, pursuing degrees in agriculture, and we were hired by the University of Kentucky soon after that um, to assist tobacco farmers as they transitioned to fruit and vegetable crops. We were given the hard task of helping farmers stay on their farm. The year that Nathan and I met and fell in love was the same year that the Kentucky Department of Agriculture launched the Kentucky Proud program. Kentucky Proud links farmers to consumers, restaurants, and institutional buyers. Restaurants like Home Cafe and Marketplace owned by our friends Josh and Chelsea Poling. The Polings go above and beyond to source as much local food as possible for their restaurant. And they go above and beyond in many other ways as well. For example, during the recent snowstorm, Josh heard that there were people in our community who were stuck at home and hungry and he, along with others, fed them hot meals. Yes. <laughs> when Josh was leaving one of those homes, a young girl said to him, thank you so much for the food. And I can tell you that if she had the courage to speak those words, that she knew that Josh was sincere. And I know that because I've been that girl. I was raised by a single mom with disabilities in what we now call a food desert and what we then called government assistance. And my mom wanted nothing more than to feed me healthy food. But the realities of our circumstances meant that oftentimes we had to depend on processed foods. And I'm realistic that most of us eat this way today and not out of necessity, but simply out of convenience. I started to think differently about food when I got a job at Jackson's Orchard and Nursery here in Bowling Green at 16 years old. I loved the connection between people and food. The first peach of the season and the celebration of apples every fall, I loved to watch how food could bring people together. And I can't help but believe that that is the connection that can change the food system around. That is what is going to create the commitment for customers to support farmers so they can, can expand their businesses. And that is what parents and people in restaurants that are preparing food, it's what's going to motivate us to make healthier decisions. 
Now, I'd like to say that when Nathan and I started having children, that I fed my family the healthiest foods possible. But the reality is, I was like most people, overworked, overwhelmed, and just picked whatever was easy and convenient. But there were three life experiences that I had that made me completely stop and think about the food that we eat and where it comes from. When my second child, Elizabeth, was born and refused formula, we began an exclusive breastfeeding relationship. When I discovered through support and encouragement of others that breast milk was the best first food, I began to consider what the next best food is. That's when I took the relationship that I have with farmers to the next level by eating their food. I found that I could save money by eating local food because I could cut down on food waste. When my third child, um, Lila, was diagnosed with severe food allergies and we had exhausted all other options to heal her, we were completely able to heal her with fresh food, real food. And when we lost Nathan's mom to a preventable disease and we spent two years of our life in Kentucky hospitals, we realized that we're losing our parents and our grandparents at a younger age to obesity, diabetes, and cardiovascular disease. That's when Nathan and I made the commitment to become full-time farmers. About the same time, there was a group of community leaders, resource partners, artists, and farmers that came together to start Community Farmers Market in Bowling Green on WKU grounds. We had two goals as a farmers market. First, we wanted to create dignity and respect for both farmers and artists. And I just really related to what Stephanie was saying because farmers and artists do deserve our respect. Artists like Sly Davis, who not only makes beautiful tie-dye, um, but she cares very passionately about food access. We went out into the community with resource partners like Dana Bennett, who cares very much about breastfeeding and local food, and she sees the connection that it can make. So together, these community leaders, these resource partners, these farmers, these artists, we went out of the community and we listened to people's needs. We listened to new consumers who aren't, weren't already eating local food and also people just who didn't have access to fresh food. College students, busy professionals, refugees, immigrants, moms with young children. We listened to what they said and they said, we have some major obstacles in our lives. We need local food to be more affordable, approachable, and accessible. To make local food more affordable, Community Farmers Market began accepting SNAP, also called food stamps, WIC and senior nutrition vouchers, and also big red dollars. Over $1.2 billion are spent on SNAP benefits every year in Kentucky. Most of those dollars go to big box stores and for processed food. If a small percentage of those dollars could go to local farmers, we could have a stronger economy. We also could help more households have nutritious, fresh food in their home. We're able to le um, leverage those supplemental nutrition program dollars by partnering them with contributions from the community, from churches, organizations, businesses, and individuals. And in a little over a year, we've already um, put $35,000 worth of fresh food in the hungriest homes of Bowling Green. We also wanted to make local food more approachable, to let people know that this is something for everyone. Um, we're only a few generations where it literally was something for everyone. We did that by launching the Local Food for Everyone Eat publication, where the words, the content, the photographs were inclusive to everyone in our community. And we also did things like we're done just here today with the mural on farms when we were doing farm tours. And this is Andy Rudloff doing a um, community mural at our farm. Transportation was a huge barrier for people, so we launched the, um, the mobile farmer's market. And the mobile farmer's market allows community farmer's market to get outside of the four walls of our building and out into the community so that we can um, make the most of the food that we have available every, available every single week and also the needs of the community. So all of us have been working together um, to, to work on these projects, plus many more that I don't even have time to mention today. But we've been asking ourselves, what's next for the local food system here in Bowling Green? 
people like Jordan and Jackson Roulette who farm alongside us um, on our farm, and they identified that people had a need for a much smaller scale CSA. They only had a need for a few vegetables every week. And so they have launched Think Little CSA. People like Emily and Chelsea, who discover that there's a lot of people who don't have time to cook meals at home. So they take food that's grown on our farm, prepare it in our Arm Farm certified kitchen, and offer a prepared food CSA that people can just heat and eat. People like Rondell Miller, who has worked dil diligently to get fresh food into Hotel Inc., a food pantry that feeds the homeless. In the first few months of being um, the director of hoteling, she got spam off the shelves and put in the groundwork to start supporting local farmers and also feeding and teaching people how to prepare fresh food. And just this week, Christian Ryan worked dil diligently to get the Farm to Campus program launched here on WKU campus. She has worked hard to get food that is grown by farmers that I know by name tomatoes by ATP greenhouses, and lettuce from Sunny Point Gardens. This is a huge win for WKU and our entire community. The moment that you realize that the way that you spend your time and your money and your resources really can impact your community, that's the moment that changes everything. So I'd like to encourage you today to meet a farmer, to visit a farm, to shop at a farmer's market, and to join a CSA. Eat at restaurants that source local food and ask the institutions that you and your family are part of to source more local food. Most importantly, would you consider today to become a farmer because we need you. Thank you.